Hello and welcome to JasonNewland.com My name is Jason Newland and I'm laughing for some reason. It's a mixture between kind of trying not to laugh and trying not to cough. I'm not sure. I think I'm trying not to laugh because I'm trying not to cough. For some, for some reason, uh, coughing is... Um, amusing me today but hey each to their own and um, what is this oh yeah this is let me bore you to sleep please only listen when you can safely close your eyes and today is I don't know I think it's well, it's definitely Saturday I think it's the 4th, I should be able to work it out, wait a minute, Wednesday was the 1st, Thursday, (laughs) Tuesday, Wednesday was the 1st, Thursday was the 2nd, Friday was the 3rd, Saturday, so yeah, Saturday the 4th of January 2020, so here we are, um, I don't think I made one yesterday, did I? I can't remember. It's, uh, I had a couple of days where I made them during the day. Which meant, uh, you didn't hear me yawning so much. (sighs) See? I held in the, (sighs) which is, uh, means I'm, uh, editing myself which is really the opposite to what I want to be doing in my life I don't want to edit myself but anyway I'll get back to I had a, a message before I go any further I should give a little description of what this is and uh, who I am as it's the beginning of the year I'll say a few things about what I'm doing why I'm doing this and <laughs> I don't know what it's all about. Um, so, before that, I'm going to say thank you to Helen, Helen, in Australia. Thank you for your kind uh, PayPal gift. Thank you, and another person who to say thank you I've replied sent me a message uh, telling me not to worry about people um, and leaving negative comments and stuff and I just replied like a thank you but you know what I mean I, I think I just got a bit of a thin skin sometimes a bit, a bit thin skinned take things to heart perhaps and which is weird really considering when I spent you know, most of my most of the 14 years really doing this uh, stuff that I do online has been on YouTube like quite a few different YouTube channels and so I had people commenting on my appearance and leaving quite horrible comments at times I mean I'd say 95% if not higher of the comments I've ever had have, have been positive or complimentary or just you know just generally nice comments online I mean, you could even say it might be 98% or 99% I don't know but there's just the odd ones and the the level of cruelty that some people just yeah you know, not not during his podcast but on YouTube I had some pretty horrible things um posted but yeah now I don't really spend much time on YouTube. I don't really make videos anymore. I post the podcasts onto YouTube, onto my YouTube channel 
for people to listen to uh, that are on YouTube but I don't really I don't feel t particularly comfortable in you know in front of a camera anymore I used to used to feel f yeah fairly comfortable but now I feel more relaxed just talking you know making an audio that's 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 kind of always where I've my heart's been really plus when I'm on camera I've have had the tendency to play up to the camera a little bit, get a little bit distracted by my own face, and I don't mean that in a good way. I mean, I just like, oh, what is what? Oh, it's all it's almost like talking into a mirror because seeing my face on the screen as I'm making the video, which is probably something that I could have done without. I could have set the camera up not to do that, but it's just a good way to make sure that I'm actually on the screen, you know. Because in the past I've had cameras where I've had it facing me and I've been talking for 40 minutes. And then when I look, I've, you know, all you've had is my left ear on the camera, which ain't ideal. Anyway. The, what's the other thing I was going to say? Yeah, so thank you, thank you for your kind words anyway. Uh, for that message that you sent. So you can contact me on my my website, jasonnewland.com. I nearly said YouTube channel there. You can contact me there, but I don't, I don't visit it very often. You know, it's it's a very slow burner. I, I get probably 1,500 plays on my YouTube channel a month. So it's, it's a very small amount. And But I know it will grow. It's like you know, every, everything online grows, doesn't it? So I suppose if I just continue doing this, so eventually it will grow bigger and that, but... Uh, YouTube really is I, mean, I don't know why I'm saying this out loud but it is about the videos and because I don't make videos really there might be a limit to the audience that I'll ever have on YouTube compared to how I used to you know used to be I used to be I wasn't like a big player you know I wasn't the top never been the top on YouTube there's been people with like, you know, a thousand times more popularity than me in the hypnosis world. But I was one of the the original ones, if that makes sense. One of the, yeah, one of the original YouTube hypnotists. Me, Adini, uh, there's a few that all kind of basically started posting hypnosis videos as soon as YouTube arrived and I was one of those and but I didn't keep my, my channel so I started my channel in 2007 and I probably had about 10 15 different channels YouTube channels since then so I never I've only had one successful I had it long enough to be successful and I deleted that in 2011 and I had half a million views on my 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 um videos and it was growing it's really started to grow to the point of I think I was getting 45,000 plays a month and each month it was going up by about 10,000 or 7,000 or something like that. And I was getting, you know, quite a few subscribers every day. So it was really growing and then I deleted it. Uh, so there you go. I kind of, 
a uh, bit of self-sabotage there for whatever reason. So yeah, I kind of got rid of that YouTube channel. But I did keep all the videos. They were all stored. Well, most of them anyway. So then I opened another channel, another YouTube channel, and uploaded them and kind of done the same thing over and over again, really, over the years. But, yeah, I don't really make... I just... When I do the podcast, upload it, edit it, whatever, and get it up ready and running, and I just share it. Share it on Facebook, share it on Twitter, and share it on YouTube. So I don't really get many, many views of any video. But I do have a lot of videos on there. Um, All of my old videos from the past. If I needed to use the word from the past as well as my old videos in one sentence. But all the old stuff. Or most of the old stuff. And I think there's 500 odd videos, I think. With me, like where you can see me. I'm not hiding behind a voice. And so there's over 500 on there. Uh, Videos that I made between 2007 and... Or, yeah, 2008, maybe. And... A couple of years ago, I suppose. I suppose I kind of stopped making hypnosis videos probably a couple of years ago and focused more on the audios, you know, the podcasts. Because what I used to do is make a video and then take the audio off the video and make that available as an MP3. And that's what I did for quite a while (sighs) so there you go (sighs) I'm tired 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 so that um, so what is this for those of you that haven't been here before, they haven't listened before, don't know what this is, wondering who is this bloke, this, what's he doing, he's just talking about nothing, why, why, well, that's kind of the point, Uh, it's called let me bore you to sleep, and I sit, I just talk, and you then get bored and you fall asleep yeah that's it really it's not it's an idea I had and it is the weird thing about it in the same way as I had the idea of making a hypnosis video on YouTube I didn't know that anyone else was doing it genuinely did not know that anybody else was making hypnosis videos on YouTube because in the early days YouTube was all about it was an experiment wasn't it really it was it wasn't an educational place to go to in my recollection like nowadays you can go on YouTube and you can get tutorials on pretty much anything you want but back then it wasn't I think partly is because the technology wasn't there and most of the videos being made and being uploaded were being made on webcams which was pretty bad quality apart from those people that actually had money to to make like professional 
you know, films. So he had some uh, proper filmmakers posting stuff, like maybe documentaries and things like that. So it was a bit of a mishmash, it still is, but it wasn't organised kind of the way it is now. And I didn't know there was any hypnosis videos on YouTube. So I've been studying hypnosis since I've been studying hypnosis since nineteen ninety eight. So nine years before YouTube well I discovered YouTube in two thousand seven. It uh I'd already posted videos hypnosis videos on MySpace before that. So I didn't know about YouTube. And actually, I was living in a Buddhist community and my friend, he said, oh. I said, what are you going, oh, what do you keep going, oh, for? Why don't you just say what you're going to say? He said, don't be rude, mate. This is the peaceful place. I said, sorry, sorry. And he said, oh. He said, uh, I saw this really funny video on YouTube. I said, what? He said, YouTube. And he said it like everyone should know what it is. Do you know the, the early days where people were saying, oh, yeah, um, I saw this thing on Facebook. What? Facebook? Don't you know Facebook? Oh, I'm sorry, even the thing that was only just released uh, three days ago, and now everyone should know about it, yeah? Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'll Facebook you. Do you remember when people used to say that? I'll Facebook you. Oh, we really embraced Facebook to our bosoms, didn't we? I'll Facebook you. Oh, the bloke who created MySpace must be so annoyed. It was his idea, wasn't it? It's, you know, he already, he'd already set the groundwork for it. Maybe someone set the groundwork for him as well. I don't know. Anyway. I digress. And my friend said, oh. It was something probably, it's something funny that he'd seen on YouTube. I said, what's YouTube? He said, oh, it's a, a video website. I said, a video website? He said, yeah, video website. And I thought, because, uh, you know, try and watch videos, it's, it's buffeting and all that stuff. He said, no, no, it's good because um, the quality is much better now. This is a really good website. There's, there's not really much in the way of buffeting. Plus, we've got broadband now. Which we did, you know, dial up is dial up was well and truly gone by then, by two thousand and seven. So I went on there, and I thought, oh, that's good, because I knew there was obviously MySpace, you get videos, but um, there's a little bit of buffeting, but I didn't used to really watch my videos back. So I didn't take much notice, I just uploaded it and, you know, very surprised though with, uh, with uh, with, what's it, MySpace. Because MySpace, again, they didn't have hypnosis people on there. Uh, it was just all, well, I didn't, I didn't see anything on there because it was just all music, musicians on MySpace. It was, but it was specifically for musicians, really, wasn't it? But then, I think the the public uh, really liked it and used it for as a social media kind of platform. But it was, you know, originally I think for musicians. 
and because I wasn't a musician and there was videos on there for music acts uh, audios from you know people playing um, you know, independent singers and whatever so there's probably millions of singers on there so I thought you know what I'll just post a video I'll make a YouTube video it was in black and white and I posted it because I'd already been doing some audios online um, because there was podcasts at that point but this was the first time I was able to actually put a video on without first of all costing money and you know because I weren't really around at that time there was a few like video things I'm trying to think there was a way of I think you could like with a website you could download a video file and then set up the there's a way of doing it so you could play a video on a website um, I did know how to do it at the time to be fair I don't now but I used to kind of know but I didn't do it for videos, I did it for audios. So there's a way of doing it where you didn't have to, uh, before podcasts kind of arrived, you could play MP3s from your website or you can let people download them. But there's even a way of doing it live where you could actually, as long as you left your laptop open or your computer on, your hard drive would be connected to the internet at all times so that people could literally download from a list of files that were I suppose it's a bit like the old um, what's that illegal sharing site that got shut down you know the music one before Spotify came along and I forget it what no I can't think of his name. But anyway, it was a bit like that, I think. It was that technology. So I did that for a bit. But I didn't like the idea of my computer just being available online, you know. Because all my files, all my videos and stuff, of audios were on there. And I didn't want to lose the stuff. Anyway, but there's diff- I've tried it so many different ways of doing this been uh, very experimental with the uh, different websites and different ways to promote stuff anyway what I was going to say is uh, what did I say Oh, this is quite good. There's uh, just watching the news. Well, it's on. It's on the news at the moment, but basically, uh, it's on mute. But there's um, I think it's that you know that carnival where people mess around with a bull and it runs around and stuff. Uh, well, a bull is basically causing absolute havoc and just ramming into people and stuff. I mean, I might be wrong, but I'm, I think it's quite funny. Maybe. <laughs> Especially if they're tormenting the bull, then I mean, it's bear baiting, isn't it? You know, Well, bull baiting. It's interesting though, just see how the ball was just flopping people all around. And there was literally thousands of people and they couldn't do nothing. When the reality is, if 30 of them jumped onto the ball, the ball would fall over. They wouldn't be able to do anything. That's, you know. Not that I'd want to give that a go myself. 
I'd like to watch from a distance. Thank you very much. Uh, what was I going to do? Oh, yeah. Um, so I posted that video. I, put, I posted a video onto MySpace, which was a black and white. I think it was 20 minutes long, maybe 10 minutes, I forget. And it was a relaxation recording. I did it on a webcam and I uploaded it. And I originally thought, I wonder if I'm going to get a little bit of a backlash because it's got enough. There's no music. I'm not a musician. It's not a music video. And I wondered whether or not people would be a bit, you know, arsy about it. So I posted it and, you know, went to school, came back, I went to work, came back, uh, looked at it the next day and I had loads of views as well as loads of um, comments, like positive comments. Some people were saying that's really good, some people were saying keep up the good work and uh, people were sharing it and I ended up I think I had about 10,000 views on that video in about a week or maybe two weeks which was a lot you know, for me it was like my very first video I ever posted anywhere it's like wow so you know MySpace but I caught MySpace at the tail end of its uh, huge popularity because I think I joined MySpace my memory would be 2006 but I might be wrong I said I might have posted that video in 2006 not 2007 it's really hard to remember exactly but I also posted um, audios as well on there because a lot of people posted their songs or uploaded their songs for people to listen and to download and again people were listening and I was like wow why why are people listening so I managed to get the link from MySpace and put it on my website so people could listen and download. So Andre's just gone to the toilet on the carpet. Yet there's paper. He's a bit naughty. I think he's putting weight on. He's definitely got a bit of a double chin going on at the moment. But I'll tell you what I like about him right now is his coat. He's got a double coat on at the moment, so he's got two two layers to him. It's not really two layers, but it's just an extra amount. It's so soft. In the summer, he's not stubbly in the summer, but he's... He's just more, I don't know, it's really, really soft and gentle, like his uh, fur or his hair, his, his back hair. Talking about hair, right now, because my hair's got so long, I decided to shave it off. Because that's a really clever thing to do in the middle of the winter, you shave your hair off. So I thought, yeah, that's what I'll do. So I shaved my hair off, but my razor is not suited for... Well, it's not suited for shaving hair that's long. I mean, I say long, it's not long, long, but it's pretty curly. It was. So I've had to charge it twice. 
and still the sides and the back the hair is still there it's shorter than it was but the front of my head and the top of my head all the way up to my crown is pretty much shaved away and the sides um, so I basically look like I've gone bald but the sides of my hair and the back of my hair are still there it actually suits me I figured about like having this as my style just shaving out the top part of my head and just having the the bald look but proper bald not baldy as in shaving the whole lot off but just leaving the backs and sides which kind of would be ridiculous in a way when I don't need to because some people might think I'm mocking them in a way you know like well because a lot of people can't help their hair and I think that I'm making fun by having mine shaved at the top and leaving it growing at the back and the sides but I think it suits me it actually seems to suit me anyway I probably won't I'll just shave it all off and then by the end of the month it'll all grow back again not to the length it was but it'll be at a normal kind of length so my hair does grow quickly and I just wear my hat when I go out for the next few weeks. That's an ex that's an example of a boring story for these recordings. It's, that was really almost pointless, you know, on the on the level of just. Why? Why are why you telling us this sort of situation, I think? Yeah. Just going to have a little drink of... A uh, little drinky. Mmm. So... <clears throat> Yeah, with YouTube, I didn't know that anybody else made videos, uh, hypnosis videos. So I posted, you know, I think I just posted the old videos from MySpace onto there. And then started posting new, new videos. And when I started, there was a limit of 10 minutes per video. I think originally when YouTube very first launched, I think it was unlimited time and then they cut that down very, very quickly because it was, <laughs> you know, imagine that people, some people were posting videos uh, for hours, lasting for hours. So they, they cut down to 20 minutes, uh, to 10 minutes. And then I think they increased it to 15 minutes. And, you know, they expanded it. And now um, you pretty much upload for any length of time again. I think there might be a limit. I don't, I'm not sure if there is. And uh, yeah, it was, it was quite steady, you know. Got a few people listening or watching the videos. I suppose I kind of became known for the YouTube videos in those first few years. You know, between I suppose most of most of the time really that I've been doing it, apart from the last couple of years. So doing these podcasts which is the same as what I've always done. I've always made MP3s, audios, recordings, but they're kind of in a different, almost like a different format now. 
you know, sort of banded together in different categories. I kind of think of each podcast being a different category. Like there's this, the let me bore you to sleep, the deep sleep whisper hypnosis. Um, they're, they're, that's a different category, a different podcast. And yeah, I was, I was fairly, it'd be quite interesting to see, to be able to get back those stats to see how it was going but I can't it's never going to happen so there's no point worrying but I look at people uh, that are still online that were there when I was there you know that are still got their um, YouTube channel for Edini is one E-D-I is it E-D I N N I, I think, and he's one of the oldest original uh, YouTube hypnotists. The same kind of time as me, maybe before me even. I'm not sure; it's hard to tell. Maybe after, but the same year, I think 2007. But he's kept his channel the whole time. So. 12, 13 years later he's had millions and millions and millions and millions of views of his uh, videos and I just kind of a little, you know, wonder I wonder I wonder where, what what my YouTube channel would be like if I'd still kept it that very first one I mean, there's no way of knowing is there but oh excuse me silly screeching of this chair I mean without doubt there'd be millions of views but I wonder kind of how many I say I say without doubt just based on what's happened afterwards. Because I've had a few channels with like 100,000 views. I've had one with, I think, a couple of 100,000. Another one with 500,000. So I had over a million views on YouTube, but just with different um, YouTube channels. But if I'd have kept one, just the very first YouTube channel, just imagine. Uh, oh, but I prefer making audios. I kind of always have really. This was the the purpose of what I wanted to do. However, with video, the technology with YouTube, it was. It was too difficult to resist the opportunity of maybe helping some people you know, on a larger audience than perhaps would listen to the audios. So, yeah. I suppose it kind of set me on my way, kind of see made me who I am <laughs> it, it's interesting it was interesting uh, times and I got to meet some people as well on YouTube and uh, I went through a period when I was doing a lot of vlogs a lot of vlogging, making video blogs, which was a little bit of a distraction at times. An, an enjoyable distraction, to be fair, quite a lot of the time, but a distraction nevertheless. You know, I need to 
for me to get stuff done I need to be focused on what it is I want to do and to keep doing that and so yeah that's why because at the moment I'm still building the website it's up and running but I'm still adding and you can't see what I've added yet but it will be available uh, within the next week or so it's basically I've just added all the back catalogue of audios mp3s from the past so they will be I've done most of them there's probably about I'd say I've done 90% so there's still a few left to do uh, but once that's done I can then spend a, give myself a bit more time focusing on producing new recordings on the other podcasts Yeah. I don't know if you ever told you my very first podcast. I think it was called mypodcast.com. And it was a free service. And I joined them in 2000, probably 2007. Maybe 2006, but. I'm not sure, but anyway, all I know is I remember in the January 2008, I had 100,000 downloads of my podcast recordings. I was getting thousands every day downloaded. I was like, wow, couldn't believe it. And then they closed the thing down because they couldn't afford to keep going. And I would have happily would have paid. Because it was such a great, it was a really good podcast. But after that, podcasts just seemed to go out, just seemed to disappear. There was loads of free podcasts. There was podcasts you could pay for. And nearly all of them seemed to just disappear and podcasting became almost just, it was like it didn't exist anymore. And it did, but it just wasn't popular. And I think that was partly, I think what made podcasts more popular is the phones, is being able to do everything on a phone now everything but go to the toilet and shave your beard off everything else you can do on a phone I imagine if you could do that press a button and just sap away stuff yeah that'd be nice my head feels weird to have half a head of hair and half a head of stubbly almost baby like scalp but guaranteed my scalp doesn't smell all lovely like a little baby's scalp because baby's heads smell nice don't they I, don't, I imagine my head doesn't smell that nice I'm sure it doesn't smell horrible but it definitely doesn't like a baby scalp is warm, isn't it? I, t- I say this like I've got loads of experience of baby scalps, but I don't. But I have seen a few over the years. They're always very warm. And also when you pick a baby up, you've got to be really careful, wouldn't you? So it's uh, like almost like they're precious. So you've got kind of... Yeah. Plus I've got nieces and nephews and stuff. And I had a little brother. It was 40 years ago, but he... No, for eight... Uh, eight... 
born when I was eight. I'm now 93, so yeah, it's quite a few years ago. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not sure if I sniffed his head. <laughs> it sounds weird, doesn't it? Sniffing heads. But you know what I mean, it's something, it's something special about I'm not a newborn baby. It's, I don't know, it's, it's almost magical really, isn't it? you think about it just a, like a human being not just a human just a, a newborn baby of any kind just being born whether it's a, a zebra or a giraffe or they're the only two animals I can think of but, but I'm sure there are other animals a monkey or a giraffe or a horse which is kind of like a zebra by the way zebra that's some people might say zebra zebra I do wonder sometimes why we say words differently because like zebra and zebra that's one of those words where I don't really why say it differently or is the reason the same as David Bowie 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 which is it is it David David Bowie or David Bowie I never asked him but as far as I'm aware, he didn't really care that much. There's something about getting paid lots of money. Where you don't have to worry about stuff like that. And being hugely famous and hugely loved as well as he was. He was a... He was a legend. He was a legend. Ground control to me, Tom. I dare anyone not to like that song. Seriously. There's some piece, some singers I just like, ah, oh, don't get it. Don't, you know. And I'm not a fan of David Bowie. I wasn't a fan of his, not like a big fan of anything. But some of his songs were brilliant. They were just brilliant, and it's it's a bit like you don't have to be a fan of Queen to appreciate Bohemian Rhapsody. The song is like wow, or you don't have to be a fan of the Monkees. saying you don't have to be a fan of them but you know there's iconic songs isn't it? like Daydream Believer was that their most popular song Daydream Believer it's not my favourite it's not my favourite one my favourite is the is it Dirty Old Scouse Git I think I think that's actually the name of it Old I don't know if it's dirty but old scouse git something like that and it's like she's a wonderful lady and she's mine oh mine and she doesn't seem to then and then she's about to be my mind it's not easy playing songs with a girl in yellow dress been a long time since the party and the room is in a mess why don't you cut your hair? Why don't you do out there? Why don't you see what I see when I see when I tear? It was um, Mikey, isn't it? Mickey? Mickey, who played the drums. He sung the, the vocals on that one. That's my favourite. And the second favourite of the monkeys is 
Take the last train to Clarksville And I'll meet you at the station You can be here by 4.30 Cause I've made a reason I'm doing the same tune as the other one <laughs> It's the same tune Take the last train to Clarksville Take the last train to Clarksville and I'll meet you at the station You can be here by 4.30 Cause I've made my reservation Don't be slow No, 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 no No, 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 no And I don't know if I'm never coming home Do, 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 do So they're, they're my two favourite Monkey songs Now I used to when I was younger, I think, you know, I'd do what everyone else did, a sort of daydream believer. Of course, that's the best one they did, but in them days, I hadn't heard the songs that the monkeys produced, you know, when I was a kid. It's only when I actually listened to the, the monkeys' greatest hits when I was, I don't know, probably about 14 that I realise, wow, you know, those two songs I just mentioned were just great, great songs. And I do believe, I do believe that the old Skit one was written by Mickey. So my favourite monkey song was actually written by them was written by the monkeys because all of the other songs weren't all of the you know the original really popular ones when they were doing the TV show they were basically actors playing band and singing the songs of that band that they were playing actors in and then they became hugely successful because a TV show was brilliant. Oh yes. So I don't know if anyone's ever seen it. The monkeys. It's uh See when I was a kid. When I was about seven. Oh no. He's talking about his childhood again. Must have had problems. Must that's why he's talking about them. No, I'm just talking about a TV program I listened to and watched when I was a kid. Oh, okay then. Carry on then. Thank you. So I did... Um, on a Saturday morning, when I was about seven, we used to get up. <sighs> I say we, me and my brothers, and we'd watch the telly and there'd be... There'd be two big TV shows on. And there was only three... There was only three TV channels at the time. BBC One, BBC Two and IT3. IT, ITV... Yeah, ITV. Sorry. And... Um, so we used to have... We didn't used to watch BBC Two... But we had Swap Shop and we had Tiz Was. Swap Shop and Tiz Was. And both of these were children's programs on Saturday morning. See, now Saturday morning it's all about cooking. <laughs> so if you go on BBC One or ITV, it's cooking in the morning and sport in the afternoon. It always used to be sport in the afternoon. It kind of has been my whole life, I think. Um, it's like a traditional thing in this country anyway, probably other countries too, where there's... You know, football, or rugby, or cricket, or tennis, or athletics, or you know, 
various different things Andre's acting a bit weird had a good old scratch and we used to alternate turn it over and we get so good at it Andre on the paper please good boy he listened to me he actually listened to me he was aiming on the carpet and I went to him on the paper and he turned his whole body and put it on the paper and did his uh, his stuff on the paper what a good boy I think that's the first time he's ever listened to me and yeah so we had these two channels that we would watch and would like skip between there was no such, there was no such thing as a remote control back then not for TV so you have to go and if I remember rightly this is one of the best you know I quite like you know it'd be nice you know to be 19 I suppose in some ways you know physically and in other ways but there is something quite nice about being able to remember and or to have lived through a period with such change like technological change to have because people that are 19 or they're in their teens have never lived in a world without mobile phones have never lived in a world with a black and white television well I'm I'm generalising here but I'm just saying generally um, I'm sure some people have a black and white television I actually had one in 2001 so I don't know why I do know why it's because I couldn't be bothered to buy a new TV so I just borrowed one and it was black and white so I was watching the black and white television for about a year. That was very silly. But yeah. But people, you know, sort of in their... What other things would they not know about? Or not know about, but not experienced... I mean, even people in their 30s and 40s may never have experienced like constant power cuts or all the strikes that happened, you know, during the 70s. You know, the rubbish not being collected and things like that that happened here. Uh, the seems to just go on forever. I mean, it's not even though those things weren't particularly didn't affect me hugely because I was a kid so I didn't really care when you're a kid there's a big bunch of rubbish it's just more stuff to play in but the idea like no mobile phones see to me I compare the mobile phone to the original Star Trek TV show where they've got those things that flip up and they say beam me up Scotty and they communicate with each other when they're on a planet or something that you know that was for me the precursor that was the idea and then it became reality I remember phone boxes I mean, there was, there's a phone box around the corner from where I live. And it's just basically somewhere you want to go if you want to breathe in urine. 
It's, I don't think the phone even works. I don't know. Um, there's another phone box near town. But that's it. I don't remember the last time I saw any other phone boxes. Because even small children have f phones now. My niece had a... I think she was... I think she was like seven or eight when she got her first mobile phone. She might have been younger. I was like, wow. I would never have got a phone when I was that age, even if they existed. So, yes. Yeah, so, I think it's quite... It's a bit of a privilege to have been able to have seen the changes that have happened. But then it's just going to be the same for those as well. For people that are 16, 18, 20 now, you think over the next 30 years, what they're going to see or what you're going to see if you're listening and you're, you're also that kind of age, the things that you're going to see and you'll be, you might be sort of where I am now talking about it and thinking, do you remember the old days where we had to actually to communicate we had to have these f carry these stupid things around well they are old phones yeah mobile phones God, oh, what a hindrance so now it just it's embedded in our brain anyway you know just a chip or move the chip from the shoulder into the brain yeah so that would be Although that technology is already being used, you can get chips implanted into your skin so that you can sort of, you can have your house all secured and have a chip underneath your skin so that you can basically buzz your way in. I've seen, I've seen uh, documentaries on it. It's like, wow, no thanks. <laughs> no, thank you. No. No, 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 no. No. Mind you, if you had it on, had them embedded into a pair of gloves, yeah, maybe. A pair of fingerless gloves and had the, like some kind of pad, you know, phone pad or control thing. Uh, and you could just speak into it, voice control, or yeah, that that would kind of work, I suppose, for me rather than actually having. I don't want to be impregnated by lots of different chips uh, in order to make phone calls. And can you imagine thirty years time, like, do you remember that f old fashioned thing? What, what, what? Yeah, the internet. Remember that. Oh, that was so flawed. Can't believe people put all their trust in that thing. Oh. Do you remember that bloke? <laughs> he used to make relaxation recordings. Whatever happened to him? <laughs> oh, he's now the king. <laughs> he's the king of England. Oh, wow, well, yeah. Didn't realise that was him. Yeah, he's 79 years old. And he's now the king. So that's the thing you think about it in 30 years time I'm still only going to be 79 and I'm going to be such a I'm going to I think I'm going to be one of those old people that I don't know just says whatever they want I'm possibly going to be like that I'm just going to be going around not caring Hopefully not in a horrible way. You know, I don't want to go around upsetting people, but hopefully go around making people laugh. You know, that 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 would, uh, yeah, that that would suit me. I think just uh, saying silly things, telling people 
you know what I used to, I, I could have been someone <laughs> I could have I could have been successful <laughs> oh, I do wonder so I'm doing alright with my hair I mean it's obviously it's you wouldn't think that if you looked at it now but I'm not that grey yet and that's what I notice whenever I whenever I shave all my hair off and I do it probably twice a year and I look through the hair there is grey there I'm not going to lie I've got no reason to lie but it's nowhere near what I would expect at, you know, nearly 50. I mean, at 49, I'm 50 in August. There should be a, I don't know, not should be, but I kind of would expect there to be a bit more grey. And there is bits of grey, but there's big clumps of hair which is just dark brown. And if I had nicer hair, I would grow it longer. I say not. There's nothing wrong with my hair, really, but it's just not how I want it to be. But I think that's a. I think a lot of people have that, don't they? Is you know, they prefer their hair to be straight when reality the hair's curly, or perhaps if it's curly. If it's if it's straight, they'd want it to be curly, you know. It's uh, it's a natural thing, isn't it, to what we to want the opposite sometimes. But I guess we can have that, you know, with hairstyles. If someone's got straight hair; they can have curly hair. It's a little bit harder for someone with curly hair to have straight hair without like constant working at it. I think. I might just wear a hat. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe I'll wear a hat. T -t wear a hat. T -t -t. <sighs> so yeah. I've managed to talk for over an hour about nothing, literally. So that's the point of this podcast, is to kind of just waste an hour, you could say, possibly. It's just talking for the sake of talking and then moving on. For the sake of moving on and then hopefully me just talking softly and gently and I mean it can be a distraction for your mind or it can just bore your mind. You know, just like when I first started doing these boring sessions, I didn't know that anybody else was doing them. And there are a few. It's only a handful, really, um, that are specifically doing this not even this kind of stuff, but it's a very, you know, it's out of all the hundreds of thousands of podcasts, there's not many like this. There's a couple that I don't listen to them, so I don't know, but um, someone said that I was, they did a, a review of one of my earlier podcasts of this let me bore you to sleep and they said I was copying someone they'd been doing it for about seven years or six years or something like oh wait a minute firstly I didn't know 
that anyone else was doing this. This was just, this came about from what other people asked me to do. And secondly, I've been doing this for 14 years, talking boringly and sending people to sleep. I'm just doing it a little bit of a different way, that's all. And that was after people telling me that how how my boring voice used to send people send them to sleep. Even the vlogs, they say I listen to your vlog and I fall asleep. Even when it's not even supposed to be boring. So my aim is to be making some more recordings, other recordings so for the other podcasts. I'm going to be doing, even though the year is kind of starting off slowly, I will be producing more recordings this year than I ever have in any year previous. That's kind of my plan. So I'm going to leave you for now and just say thank you to everyone that's left you know happy new year messages on Facebook for me and I will see you very soon speak to you again probably tomorrow so thank you for listening remember be kind to yourself. Lots of love.